Deformable models. A deformable model is a geometric object whose shape can change over time. So uh, example would be, let's say, a human body or um, something that's uh, articulated that isn't rigid. So the study of deformable models and the methods to represent them have been very successful and widely used in both computer graphics and computer vision. And as we'll see, it combines knowledge from mathematics, physics, and mechanics. So often they're often called physics-based models. So some of the advantages of them are they can uh, inherently they're inherently smooth and can tolerate noise and missing data. Um, they're useful for time varying phenomenon and they're interactive so you can have some control over the processing. Uh, some examples of problems that can be handled by them are subjective contours like this. So you can find a contour that fits the apparent um, shapes. Um, tracking of human body motions such as lips or hands. These are um, particularly good for video because the position of the uh, hand, for example, does not change much from one image to the next. So the initial guess that you need to provide um, is pretty close to where it will be in the next image. Medical image segmentation is another very useful field, as well as uh, fitting and modeling structures and aerial images such as buildings and roads. This particular shape shows um, an initial guess for the shape as drawn by the user and this shows the uh, final fitting of that contour, deformable contour, as it's deformed to fit the image data. Um, let me skip over that. Um, classically, uh, classic paper on this was uh, the one by um, Cass et al. in 1987, <coughs> and the, um, they initially applied it to contours or curves that they called snakes, but Deformable models can also be applied to surfaces or volumes. Um, so let's look at snakes. A snake is an energy mini minimizing spline. So it, uh, it's like a physical object that resists stretching and bending. So it has some internal energy. And it's pulled toward image features such as lines and edges. So that's, it's minimizing some external energy. This, the word spline comes from the technique used to build um, ships and boats. The, um, the cross section of the boat would be laid out in a loft and then a thin wooden strip or spline would be fastened to those points and it would form a smooth curve and uh, the dimensions of that then could be taken to form the hull of the ship. So how do we do this in image processing? We represent the curve as a set of points, um, and a spline is assumed to be um, joining those points. And we try to minimize a energy functional to that shape. So this is composed of several pieces, and we can uh, use a weighting factor for each of these pieces. So the first piece is this energy continuity term, and this basically tries to make sure that the distance between pairs of points um, does not change. So actually you would probably subtract from this distance the initial distance between the pairs of points. So you wouldn't want the, um, the curve to basically stretch or contract based on that. The second term is this uh, smoothness term which tries to minimize the second derivative of the along the curve so it tries to keep um, adjacent triplets of points in a straight line so if they're not in a straight line this quantity becomes non-zero and adds to the energy and finally this last term is the image the edge extraction term which is the gradient of the image values so if a point is on top of a um, point where there's a high image gradient then this contributes a large negative value, which tends to minimize the energy like that. So we need to start with an initial guess for the curve, and then um, the processing goes like this. For each point, we adjust the location of the point to minimize its energy, 
we move the point to that location and repeat for all points. And this whole process is done until there's no further change in the point positions. Some um, variations on this uh, basic method, one is this method called gradient vector flow. And it basically um, tries to address the problem of that snakes can be uh, slow to converge and they have the initial guess has to be pretty close to where the final shape should be. So the reason is that image gradient um, does not extend over, over a very large distance so a point does not see an image gradient unless it's right on top of it. So the, their solution was to diffuse those gradient values outward to create a field of forces and those forces would help drive the snake toward the boundaries of the object. So the demos that I'll show are on this website. Um, there's a bunch of MATLAB code on there. This shows um, a shape, this sort of ring like this. Um, and this is the, um, the gradient values for that. And the uh, traditional snake without the diffusion does not um, find the final shape, at least in the contours here. If you do diffuse the gradient values outward to create a force field, then that will force the contour into the concavity, and you can actually start from further away as well. Some animations showing the uh, traditional snake in the upper left here, and the gradient vector field snakes in the right and bottom. And another example on real image um, showing the initial snake and how it fits to this um, shape in this MRI image.